Next up for review we have a game from 1985 called The Captive. Nothing more to say about that so let's load it up. The front cover for this one's uh, quite original. Don't think I've seen anything like this from the Mastertronic artwork before. So it's got the captive written down the left hand side and a hand coming through some prison bars. Kind of scary I guess. And it's a 1985 release so grid style packaging as you can see there. Loads of instructions on the back. As you might expect from this era the instructions are pretty basic so we've just got a one pager introduction. Unwittingly you have wandered into the glen of coloured corpses. Sorry, corpses. God that's difficult to say. And now realise that you're completely lost. In fact you have found yourself in a unique real-time adventure which blends scrolling landscapes with a new text-free method of computer interaction. Pretty sure that in 1985 text-free method of computer interaction wasn't new. But there you go. Uh, so there's a bit more blurb there and then you've got the controls and a bit more about the controls and the copyright info at the bottom there and foreign language instructions on the rest of the inlay and that's it. The loading screen's pretty much a representation of the front cover as is typical and it's by our old friend Jim Wilson as identified by his name in the corner there. Again not a lot much more to say about that. Okay so here's the title screen, um, as you can see there it says it's written by Prisoner who was the guy who wrote Spooks uh, which I reviewed about a week ago, a couple of weeks ago maybe and uh, the guy's real name I found out is Nigel P Johnston, he also did a few other games for the Commodore 64. Um, this is kind of a follow up to Spooks or, or rather an improvement on Spooks in the, in the interface and the playability as you will find out soon enough. Uh, what hasn't changed in comparison to Spooks very much is the graphics, as you'll see in a moment, and the god-awful music. This is a rendition of The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is absolutely dire, and you will soon uh, want me to switch it off. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be possible. So let's get on with the game. So uh, basically you're in this uh, Glen of the Coloured Corpses or whatever it was called which is a very colourful looking town uh, surrounded by a forest. The graphics are pretty similar to Spooks. The main character looks exactly the same. Um, the trees look quite similar as well but obviously the, you're not trapped in a house this time. You've got a bit more flexibility on where you can wander. You can see on the right hand side there you've got a similar sort of menu as there was in Spooks with various options. We'll get to that in due course. There's things you can pick up, again just like in Spooks, so you can pick up a melon for example and your health is constantly going down so you can also use an item, when you use a food item your health goes up, energy's in the corner there. So we'll get onto those other options. These things that are flying around, these little demons, uh, they are deadly to the touch, much, much like the ghosts in Spooks, so you've got to be careful there. Other things you can pick up include scrolls which you can read Tells you how to use a compass, seems pretty straightforward um, There's some bone there to pick up but I'm not going to bother picking that up for the time being Let's have a wander around and see what else we can find More food, doesn't seem to be a limit to your energy So, oh I didn't mean that Oops. Pick up. So if I eat this, it should whack my energy up even higher. Yeah, to 11,000. So that's not going to cause me any problems with the on the health side for a bit at least. Uh, so the idea of the game is to escape this area, basically. In short. Uh, so you do that by um, picking up items and using them and moving them around and the usual sort of arcade adventure kind of stuff. So let's go for a wander around and see what we can find. This is the compass, which I'll just swap for the scroll, I don't think I need to keep the scroll. 
and also what have we got here? Magic beans. Save those for later as well. The scroll wind's a lot better than spooks. Uh, the the plain area is a bit smaller, but um, it's quite easy to move around. There's still these cat places where you kind of get stuck on the edge of objects as well. Let's just pick up that blue key because I imagine I'm going to need that at some point. Hmm. So, as I mentioned already, the, the sound's awful, really terrible grating tune and the graphics are pretty basic just like they were in Spooks. A cup of coffee perhaps? What happens if we use a teacup? Ha <laughs> got no milk, very good. I don't seem to be able to get any further there, so I'll carry on wandering around and see if I can find anything interesting. You don't need to see it all though. So I actually died and I've had to restart the game twice. As with spooks, uh, if you get caught in an area with an enemy and you can't get away from it, it does touch you and it does kill you, which is very annoying. Uh, but I have now picked up a calculator which if we go back up this path you can see there's a sum on the wall of the castle there so what I'm going to do is use the calculator and as you see a calculator graphic comes up which is quite clever uh, if you type in the sum which is 15 times 66 equals you get this very vibrant flashing on the screen and the door opens which is kind of cool so there's the, the ability to use various items to solve puzzles within the game uh, which makes it significantly better than Spooks so far um, it's still really hard and really annoying with the music uh, it's by no means a perfect game, but it's definitely better than more, more, one more go type playability um, than the Spooks had. So I've just picked up a bit of a helicopter, so it seems you can build a helicopter. I obviously need another bit to be able to do that and probably various other items as well. Let's see what this scroll here says. Ah, there we go. To build a helicopter, assemble the two halves and use this scroll. So if I find the other half of the helicopter, then I can build a helicopter. Wasn't expecting that in a game like this, to be honest. I've got a green key, so I've gone through the green door, as you just saw there. And uh, over here we have another item. Which is a typewriter. By the way, in case you're wondering why my items have changed so much since the last uh, bit of video, I have actually died again and had to start again. Very annoying. So I haven't done the helicopter bit again on this go, but uh, there you go. So what I'm looking for now is a scroll, because we, I believe when you combine the scroll with the typewriter, you can type your name on a item, on a scroll, and it uh, unlocks an ability. Of course, I'm now struggling to find any scrolls, which is slightly annoying. Okay, this is to certify that such and such can fly a helicopter. So I guess when you collect all the bits of the helicopter, you need that before you can fly it. So let's even work out how to use 
the typewriter with this. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's quite cool. You get to type your name on the scroll. And there you go. I can now use a compass and fly a chopper. Very good. So basically, the, the more things you find, the more scrolls you activate, you can activate various abilities, which then when you get the objects to use with them, uh, allows you to use those objects properly. So that's quite cool. Um, it's surprisingly not a bad little game, if only for the terrible music and the fact that one hit from any enemy kills you stone dead. Um, it would actually be a really good little game. Unsurprisingly, shortly after stopping the video, I uh, died again, but there's another thing I want to show here, and then I'm going to give up, I think. Um, if I pick up the other half of scroll I've got there, and then use one half, you see one half, and then if I use the other half, you can see the whole half, the whole half, <laughs> the whole hole, in fact, of the, of the scroll. Uh, which is also quite interesting. Uh, unfortunately I don't have the typewriter anymore at the moment so I can't do anything with those two halves of a scroll to allow me to swim uh, but maybe I'll manage to do that. Let's have a look and see if I can manage to get back without getting killed. That's where the typewriter is so I've just got to get back to that point on the map without one of these things hitting me which is easier said than done but let's give it a go. The music's driving me absolutely insane. Oh no, and I've died again. Right, that's enough now. You get the idea. It's quite a clever little game in terms of what you can do within the adventure, uh, but it's it's rather ruined by the fact that uh, you just get killed so easily by something that just suddenly appears on the screen and gets you. So uh, you'd have to have a lot of perseverance to get through the whole of the game, but it does show some quite clever ideas for its time. 1985, a time way before games like the uh, LucasArts Scum games, which use similar concepts of picking up items and using them with one another to create other items. So some quite clever ideas there, just a bit of an annoying game. Worth 199? Probably just about, yeah. <laughs>